In his book, Zone of Transition, on the end of post-communism, Boris Budden offers a review of Dushan Makavejev VR, Mysteries of the Organism, from 1971. The film is a homage to the work of psychologist Wilhelm Reich, matched with a story about a Yugoslavian girl's affair with a Russian skater. The erotic drama is ending with a bizarre scene. The beheaded head of Milena, the main character of the film, lies on a plate, on a table. Out of a sudden, she starts talking. Boris Budner understands this as an epitaph about the character's failed struggle for her freedom and about the failed emancipatory project of communism. Looking towards the camera, through the screen, into the viewer's eyes, Milena says, Comrades, even now, I'm not ashamed of my communist past. Si je ne supportais plus les potences, avec mon illustre confrère, le chirurgien Louis, nous avons pensé à cette machine. Les condamnés seront décapités par l'effet de ce simple mécanisme. On ne sent pratiquement rien. Tout au plus, l'impression d'un souffle d'air frais sur la nuque. Un minimum de souffrance auquel chacun a droit. C'est propre, rapide et efficace. After decapitation, there is a chance for the brain to continue living for another 13 seconds. 13 seconds is the approximate duration during which the brain can keep on going without new oxygen and glucose provided to the bloodstream. But this varies from a victim to another. Even so, she has a couple of seconds left. But this story is composed of moving digital images. She has all the time in the world. 1789. The great revolution has begun. The hands of the masses are smeared with the blood of the poor bleeding aristocracy. Every day the tumbrils run a regular half-hour service between the Bastille and the many guillotines around the city. The growing mounds of noble heads are only matched by the growing mounds of unused return tickets. No one is spared. Madame la guillotine claims them all. Dukes and duchesses, lords and ladies, men and women of both sexes. A dozen times an hour the drums roll, the blade falls and the heads roll. Yes, every five minutes a freshly sliced loaf. Would you believe me if I told you that cutting heads is an act of socialist revolution? Would you imagine that the guillotine is a tool for social radicalism? Cutting not just through flesh and bones, but deep into social class segregation. <laughs> Sounds beautiful, especially when you think of it in the context of the 18th century. It was a revolution in itself, not just a tool for the French Revolution. It brought equality in death and equality before the law. It was invented specifically to be a humane method of punishment. A humane method to kill someone, if that thing is possible. At least it sounds understandable in the lenses of the 18th century. But the last guillotine was in France on the 10th of September 1977. 1977 was the year when the last person was legally executed by beheading in the Western world. That is barbaric. I don't know, but definitely outdated. In 77, everything started to disintegrate. 
and the tools were already melting in our hands. The punk roar and the beginning of the end, of fetishizing the end. But this is a simplistic way of putting it. Ever since people started recording information, there's been a need to duplicate it. Two years before that, in 1975's Super Bowl commercials, Xerox, the US company, debuted an advertising campaign featuring Brother Dominic. The commercial presented a monk using Xerox 9200 duplicating system to produce 500 copies of a hand-illuminating manuscript this saving decades of work in the scriptorium. Brother Dominic's abbot called this apparent laboring by the scripts a miracle, as the roly-poly friar looked heavenward, thanking Xerox for the 9200. It's a miracle. By the way, God is dead. Long live the new gods. Dialectics, right? Hyperoxia. Hyperoxia is the term for oxygen poisoning. It occurs when cells, tissues and organs are exposed to an excess supply of oxygen or higher than normal partial pressure of oxygen. Hyperoxia. I believe that there are ways to kill the brain without decapitation. There are methods to kill hope as well. How does it feel to be without the body? I almost forgot, but that doesn't affect me much. As long as I'm on a screen or stored somewhere, I live. Yes, you are free. You can be here and there in the same time. You can connect with everything and everyone. Just with some, but that doesn't change anything. <laughs> the wonders of the network. This is not life after death. This is death, like a continuous end, like falling into an abyss forever. With time, one forgets that he or she is falling. Gravity is limiting her movement. She is not used to be in a continuous state of falling. Now she doesn't know how to use her limbs anymore. They feel inadequate. Life unfolds in front of her eyes. Images upon images. Electric glimpses of shapes, thoughts, stories and feelings. Too accelerated to be grasped and comprehended. I'm not ashamed of my communist past. I'm left hopeless in the face of its future. You have around 13 seconds after decapitation, time during which you may be conscious. What would you like to do with this time? 
a fight for communism.